Podcasting, the boasterous part of the fastest game in the world. So strap on your lids and lace them up, Rook. You're listening to the Barn Chirpers Hockey Podcast. And take a lap. Clap it up, boys. Clap yeah, it up. Get up. Getting warmed up here on the Barn Chirpers Hockey Podcast. You know where to find us at Barn Chirpers Pod on Instagram and threads. And you know how to do all that other stuff. I say it every single week. If you want to learn more or hear more, you know what to do. It's 2024. Come on. What are we doing? <laughs> Captain, uh, listen, buddy. I want to hit you with something that's pretty cool. The Team USA World Juniors just won the gold medal for the sixth time, beating Sweden 6-2, to two, which, hey, stick taps, stick taps, boys, stick taps. Uh, that's uh, good a win for uh, Team USA, America, and stuff. Um, one guy, uh, well, there's two guys that I want to mention on this squad. One of them, his name is... Rutgers McG- 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 McGurthy or McGurdity or McGrady, something like that. He has the most outlandish name on planet Earth. And I'm like, looking that up. <laughs> it's Rutger. It's Rutgers Mc Mc McG something. I'm not exact. I don't remember exactly, but I saw that and I was like, "What in the planet uh, Uranus is this?" Uh, <laughs> But anyway, <laughs> Rutger, Rutger McGrorty. There it is. Rutger McGrorty. Yeah. Um, he had a big show wow. at the World Juniors there. Uh, and listen, I, I, I'm not, not speaking for you, but we don't really follow the World Juniors too much. Uh, I mean, there are a lot of prospects from, uh, you know, a lot of guys that were drafted or about to get drafted. So it's a cool thing but we don't necessarily follow it. But what's interesting about this is this is our little warm up lap segment. And Hey, uh, just real pause. Uh, if you're listening, we hope that you are, uh, we're going to get to a little who's hot, who's not in our first segment, second segment, we're going to talk about the PWHL, which you can't wait to talk about and then some other stuff. But uh, anyway, getting back to this, this little warm up lap, one prospect, a Philadelphia Flyers prospect who was drafted last year. One cutter Gauthier was also involved in the world juniors had a pretty good showing. Uh, turns out he's like, you know what? I don't want to play for Philadelphia. I don't want to be here. I don't, I don't want to allegedly, uh, I don't want to be here because of the rookie GM and the coaching style. So Philadelphia. Okay. You don't want to be a flyer kid. You can get the out of here. Bye. See you later. Uh, but the, I guess what has come out, Frank Saravalli, who's a NHL insider of Daily Faceoff, he said that both John LeClaire and Danny Brie and Keith Jones, all part of the Flyers organization, went and tried to talk to Cutter because they heard the rumblings that he didn't want to be there. Cutter allegedly didn't even want to take a meeting with any of those guys, allegedly. So to, to wrap this kind of whole thing up, like, how in the world, as a prospect who has done anything in the league, how do you think that you have this type of swagger to tell an organization, I don't want to play here? And hey, that I'll say this. Sure, that's his right to do. He hasn't signed. So like, okay, cool. But those are some big cojones, brother. Those are some real big cojones to say, I don't want to play here. Uh, I got a lot of problems with this. Uh, I mean, number one, to hammer your point home, you've done nothing yet. Nothing. You have not been on the ice yet. And I mean, I've had a lot of talks with Corey over the years. Well, I say over the years, but like, you know, relatively recently where he's like, ah, oh, this kid cutter, like he's, you know, not the savior of the franchise, but especially going into the season where they thought they were going to be garbage, uh, they had a lot of hope from him. And I don't under like he basically had it could have had the, the keys to the kingdom. <laughs> like, yeah, uh, yeah, he really could have. And they're ahead of schedule. Like, you know, maybe to their own detriment. We've talked we've talked about that ad nauseum. They're ahead of schedule. They're in a playoff position right now where they should not be. Like they're they should be bottom dwellers and they're not. They're getting yep. coached up. Uh to go play in Anaheim. Yeah, I, I mean, if you're taking a big step back, man. Uh where where you very well could could see potentially some playoff experience this year. If, you know, if the Flyers make a deep run, you could see some playoff experience on a team that, again, we've said, you already mentioned it, 
that isn't supposed to be there. And now, you know, so as you mentioned, the trade was made to Anaheim. Uh, so Gauthier is a forward, but the Flyers get Jamie Drysdale, who is a right shot defenseman, which uh, I guess is what they really, really needed. Uh, and a 2025 20, second round pick and send uh, Cutter to Anaheim. So, uh, like you mentioned, you're going from potentially seeing playoff time this year uh, to a team that uh, this is kind of burying the lead a little bit for our who's not, who's not segment, but a team that's not going to make the playoffs. They're going to yeah. be bottom, bottom dwellers this year. Yeah. Yes. And uh, there, look, there's, are there piece, there are pieces in Anaheim? Sure. You know, you know, Zegra still hasn't been like what he could be. Carlson hasn't seen like a ton of minutes. Uh, Minchikov, like they have a fine young club there that has good veteran pieces in place that have made them more competitive than they should be a, a lot of the times this year. But it, you're looking at years before Anaheim is playoff ready. Whereas if if Philly gets into the playoffs this year, they their window is just opening up. I mean, you know, depends on how they can pull in young talent. But like, yeah. but I mean, it may only be a short window. But to your point, he could see playoff time this year if he if he made the club, and it's possible that the window is open for two years that they're that they're a playoff team. Um, that it. it other than it being Anaheim, other than, you know, living in California with other, you know, big prospects, I don't see the advantage for Cutter Gauthier. I don't, I don't, I don't, I, I don't like this. Again, and I just, you know, it just comes off very entitled to me, which, hey, mm -hmm. he's a young kid, so it kind of tracks. Uh, but you're already getting, you're already going to, you've already established now that you have essentially a bad reputation. So mm -hmm. you better be really good on the ice because if you're not your NHL career is going to be really, really short kid, like for real, because nobody's going to want to sign you with that kind yeah. of attitude. You know yeah. what I mean? So, uh, and, uh, we did get a quote from Corey. Uh, I am going to not say the expletive, uh, <laughs> in his, in his comment, but, uh, Corey says, and I quote, but if Gautier doesn't want to be a flyer expletive deleted, uh, he can take his pretty butt to Anaheim. The vibe has been off between him and the team anyway, so it makes sense to get value in return. We could definitely use Drysdale, but now you have to hope that everything works out with Mitchkov. Uh, end quote. And, I mean, that's essentially what Danny Brier and Keith Jones uh, also said about the whole thing. Is like, you don't want to be a flyer? Okay, double birds, bro. We'll, we'll get something for you. Because, again, uh, as Corey mentioned, and as we said to his trade value, would, is, is the highest that it could possibly be right now coming off the world juniors and having a good showing. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it really, it's really weird for me to say this, uh, wearing my Stanley cup, uh, Stanley, uh, my Stanley cup champions shirt from 2018 and being a caps fan and everything we know about me in the, in Philadelphia. But I hope <laughs> that, uh, Drysdale works out really well in Philly. Uh, and they continue to like, do well this year, which is really weird for me to say, uh, know, just, right? just to kind of shove it, shove it in this kid's face because uh, he, he definitely needs a reality check. I think I, yeah, I think you put it perfectly there. Kid needs a reality check. And if you get a chance to, to possibly slot in third or fourth line on a, on a playoff team, like the flyers that, I mean, the, by the sounds of it, the kid just doesn't want to work like, cause he, Torts is going to make you work. And and that's exactly what he just, in not so many words, said. Like, he doesn't yeah. want to work. Yuck. That's, yeah, that's kind of what I got out of it, too. So, uh, yeah, you you definitely wouldn't even make that squad anyway, truly. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't last long anyway. So, uh, I guess best of luck to you. Uh, but it was definitely interesting over the last couple of days to see that. Uh, and it, it, just to close up this this opening segment here on, on this whole trade and Cutter Gauthier, it happened really quick. And this is what, uh, again, Keith Jones and Danny Brie talked about. Was like, thankfully, it was kind of kept, in a sense, under wraps where it didn't get out until – like the trade already happened because they did get some return for this kid. And again, it pains me to say this, but I'm glad Philly was able to make this move and actually get something for him uh, and not just totally get screwed over. Cause again, it's Philly, but 
we love to see some underdogs, yeah. you know, some underdogs win and some underdogs rise back up again. Is Philly really an underdog? Not over the history. They've always been a solid team, but over the last few years, uh, they're, you know, they're not, a, they're not a, a playoff team. So I'll take my third big sigh of this segment. I'm <laughs> glad that Philly got something for him, I guess. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> anyway. Anyways, uh, so while Cutter Gauthier is not hot right now, let's talk about some teams that are hot, Justin. And I'm going to hit you with this one real quick. Let's see if you can guess it. This team has not allowed more than three goals since the first week of November. Their starting goaltender has not allowed more than two goals since the middle of November. This team is fill in the blank. Well, I'm going to go with my gut here because they're the number one team in hockey. So, like, I I didn't know these stats, but I, I'm taking a complete wild shot. The Winnipeg Jets. Ding, 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 Justin. The Winnipeg Jets, like you said, not only are the top of the league right now, not only in uh, points. Well, actually, uh, I guess technically, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're four-point lead on everybody right now. Or I'm sorry. Blame my last. They are the top team, though, with 58 points in the league and a 725 win percentage. So they're leading the league in points and in win percentage and those stats, like I just said. So Hellebuck is having a Vesna caliber season, possibly his best career year yet. Uh, and again, that stat that I said, not allowing more than two goals since the middle of November. So that was the beginning of the season. We are... Well, Winnipeg now is 40 games into the season. So most of this season, he has had less than two goals allowed, essentially. And Winnipeg, their guys that are scoring are not named Kyle Connor because he's out. So yep. they're getting depth scoring. They're getting goaltending. And also their backup there, Laurent Brosson, is doing pretty well, too. So uh, the Winnipeg Jets, we said this a couple times over the last couple weeks, but the Winnipeg Jets are hot. And we did not see this coming. No, and it's it's a beautiful look, man. Like if if anybody's learned anything from this pod is number one, we actually love being wrong. Um, yeah, be, yeah. I, I there's nothing more I love than being wrong, especially about a club. And so when a team like Winnipeg gets the deals done uh, at the beginning of the year, Shifley and Hellebuck, uh, you know, it changes things. I mean, you look at the tra trajectory, like, and you deal off PLD, you get those two good pieces in uh, Velarde and IFO. It, it, it's just awesome. And you watch them, and yes, Hellebuck is having an outstanding season, but the defense in front of him is as big a piece of that, too. Like, they're playing really, like, bang up hockey. They're big dudes getting in people's way, and uh, and they're scoring, too. You, uh, Morrissey is the cat I have on my fantasy club getting goals and, and apples. So like everything is going right in Winnipeg and they just walked down Vancouver and Vegas and look, man, I love to see it and I hope it continues. Yeah, no, I mean, uh, like you mentioned on that back end there, uh, I didn't have it right in front of me, but uh, guys like Neil Pionk is a plus 12. Brendan Dillon is a plus 16. Um, I don't know Morrissey's. I'm about to look at right now. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba, Morrissey is a plus 23. Uh, just right there, three three of your 6D guys are plus way ahead, so they don't get scored on. Again, from that first stat, not allowing more than three goals uh, since November. Again, uh, if you're listening to this uh, a little bit later on, but it is January 10th, 2024. So that's a long time to be playing great hockey um so uh, again we love to see it and also i love i love that i never i never would peg winnipeg for the that doesn't <laughs> seem right i would never pick winnipeg to be the best canadian team in the league you usually don't see that and we talked about that before again i love to be wrong i love that winnipeg is the one or two best canadian team in the league right now next to Vancouver. I love it. And I, I also love like Gary Bettman hates this. I, I guarantee it. <laughs> like, oh, he hates it so much. He's trying to re relocate them back to Atlanta right now. 
I would love nothing more than Winnipeg to stay hot and get into the cup. And, it, you know, whether they win or not, who cares? Just getting in and the, the sour puss on Gary Bettman's face when, when the Winnipeg Jets are in the cup would be everything for me. I, I agree. I, I want that, too. Uh, another another team that's close to Canada, but actually a North American team. Whew, we already talked about them last week in the Winter Classic. The Seattle Kraken coming out of nowhere. They are 8-0-2 over their last 10. So they are on a 10-game point streak. We talked about it last week. Joey, Joey, Joey is doing great. Driggs is doing great. They're getting depth scoring all around. Kind of the same idea here we just talked about. Uh, about Winnipeg, but the Kraken are showing up and, you know, they're still, they're, they're in fifth place right now in the Pacific. So they're still creeping up, but they're tied with Edmonton and they're only four points away from LA and only eight points away from Vegas. Who's faltering. So uh, right now they're hot and will the streak continue? I hope it does, but right now they're hot. And I want to pose this to you, Justin pass or shoot. Let's say, so they're at 40, 40 games played right now. Pass or shoot, by game 60, Seattle will be three, number three in Pacific. Who's ahead of them? Vegas and... So you got 20 games. Uh, right now, Vegas with 51 points, LA with 47 points. That's rough. Vegas has also played 40 games thus far. LA and Edmonton both have three games in hand. That's rough because Vegas so is going 20 for... games to gain 20, sorry, 20 games to gain two spots. Vegas is going through a rough patch, but how long does that last? LA has settled. Again, I don't, how long does that? Well, you know, maybe LA is what they thought. Maybe LA is just settling to what we thought they were. Oh, uh, uh, I got I have to go with my gut here because my, my gut at the beginning of the season was C- Seattle was going to be better, and they're finally showing it. So I'm gonna I'm gonna shoot on that. I'm gonna shoot that they run down Los Angeles and Vegas and and jump to third place. I feel like it's risky business <laughs> because of those two teams, but um. You got to ride the hot hand, and again, you know they're playing playing well, and uh, maybe they're just now getting to the point to where we thought they were at the beginning of the season. So we'll see. Yeah, I do want to be contrarian for for show content, but I have to give the homer pick here. I I'm going to shoot on that too. I think while you know being you know not having any regulation losses, that's not that's really not sustainable. Uh, unless you're the Boston Bruins of last year, and we already we already know what happened there, uh, but I'm still going to shoot on it. That I think it's going to level out a little bit, but I st- I think uh, I think if they can at least stay at, at around you know the the seven and two, you know win at least seven out of ten, uh, they'll be in good shape. So I'm going to shoot on that because again, that's the homer pick in me. I, I want to see it. I want to see it happen for sure. Uh, another team. That is hot. The last one that I'm gonna that I'm gonna give you with the hot ones. And if you've noticed, we're trying to talk about teams that we don't normally talk about. Obviously, there's a couple of other teams that are doing great. You're the Rangers, the Florida Panthers, so on and so forth. Uh, another team that's doing pretty dang good recently, the Edmonton Oilers. They're eight and two, Justin. They are 18 and six since getting Coach Knobloch behind the bench. Uh, I mean. Zach Hyman is on pace for 60 goal season. Uh, Connor McDavid is doing Connor McDavid things. Leon Dreisaitl is doing Leon Dreisaitl things. So while this is kind of a natural conversation, I suppose, but they pulled their head on their butts. And would they have done that with Woodcroft? We'll never know, truly. But uh, it's interesting to see the oil take such a – they're the only team since – since their coaching change, it has actually turned things around. This is the only one that has actually made a true difference. So that to me is interesting that the one coaching change has made such a, such a difference. 
in and last I checked, and this I can't remember if this was the night before, if this was last night, they snuck into that the second wild card spot. When we talked about them, like right after the change, I think we I think we gave the nod that they'd heated up, and we we're like, oh man, but they're they're so far out. I don't know if they've done it. They just kept working, and here they are. Uh, they found their way into a playoff spot. Now again, like it's the Edmonton Oilers, and they should have already kind of been there <laughs> but when you're struggling like that uh and you make the, the the coaching change and then you go and then you suddenly become the team that you're supposed to be you still have to give props because you're still hot <laughs> like it's you still have to go out and win hockey games and they're going out there and doing it and um it's at this point I want to bring up something. I don't know. We a couple weeks back we were we were delving into a project where we were going to talk about um who gets back to backs. And I had the front end of the alphabet, which means I had the Edmonton Oilers. And here's a stat for you that uh the Edmonton Oilers by this point have only had one back to back game. I'm not sure if you knew that, Joe. Did you? That's crazy. And schedule, again, schedule matters. You know, um, you, you're you not tired. You don't just play a big game. Uh, so, yeah, that's I, – I again, I'm, we, we kind of sort of tabled that project for, for now, but uh, it'd be interesting to see when, like, that catches up, if that catches up for them, if they have a month where they have a ton of back-to-backs. Mm, I kind of did the whole season and <laughs> well, I, I, they, I think they by far have the least in, at least in the half that I did. Um, and th that's just shocking because, you know, the devils have already had like nine or 10 at this point in the season, just to kind of put it comparatively. Uh, it's, but, but again, like, all you can do is what is in front of you. All you can do is play the games that are in front of you. All you can do is go on ice and try to win hockey games. So I don't put that against them. That's more against the league. But yeah, uh, if you're able to rest, you better you better win some hockey games. Agreed. Uh, so we're going to move on to a couple of teams that are not hot, Justin. And of course, we know the ones, generally speaking, the Sharks are not hot, of course. As a matter of fact, fun fact, in only <laughs> – how many games have the Sharks actually played? Hold on one second. The Sharks have played uh, 41 games, and in 41 games, they have gone on two 10-game losing streaks. Oh. <laughs> they are not hot by any means. Uh, so we know that. We know the Blackhawks aren't hot, yet, so on and so forth. First one I want to hit you with. Like you mentioned, the Vegas Golden Knights, three and seven over their last 10. They've been slowly falling, not necessarily falling out of the Pacific. They're still solidly in that second position. But like we just talked about, teams like Edmonton, teams like Seattle, they're slowly creeping their way up, just playing consistent hockey. Vegas just can't seem to can't seem to get a win uh, right now, it seems. I feel like a lot of that is injuries. And will they come back to the dominant team that they were when they get all their guys healthy? Uh, probably. But right now, you could still lose a lot of ground if you can't win a game right now. So right now, Vegas is not hot. It, it, you know, this is a team that made us, and, you know, it's also made us very repetitive on this program. But it's made us stu look stupid a lot already. We only started this yes. show, what, in like March or April. And Vegas made us look dumb a lot. So, like, I'm not ready to count them out. But at some point, you got to kind of right the ship and win hockey games. <laughs> like, you, it, going three three and seven uh, for the rest of the way, you are you might skate in but how cold are you going in and you you got to have some sort of moment hockey is very much a, a a sport of momentum and they have none right now and this includes the big time loss that they just took on at, at the Agreed. winter classic um yeah i mean aiden health i, I just got a notification aiden Hill's healthy 
Oh, okay. That's good. Oh, it must be on a delay. <laughs> But so with uh, Aiden Hell being healthy, we'll, I guess we'll see uh, if they can, you know, turn things around. I mean, uh, we'll see how he is uh, coming back from injury. Uh, um, another team that is not hot are the New York Islands. They were doing well there, staying in the mix. But over the last 10, they are 4-4-2, four, four, and two. not hot. Uh, and again, we've, uh, we've talked about them at nauseum. Uh, they still have their fourth in the Metro right now. Uh, they are still holding on to that first wild card spot, but only by one point. Uh, and your devs, the Caps, the Penguins, and Detroit are all right behind them by two points. So with your, you know, Vesna Trophy, uh, Sorokin, you know, guarding the net, and you are not hot right now, it just goes to show, like we say almost every single week now, the Islanders have become a trend. You got to make a move and get a better team on the ice because you're not hot. And this kind of goes back to like our conversation about them in the preseason where you feel like, again, are they just kind of settling into the team that, that you thought they were? I think we both thought the same thing, but I kind of over may have overvalued Sorokin who because of the team in front of him has gotten shelled a lot this year. Um, Like he can only do, he can only win you, but so many games. And uh, I kind of overvalued that where you kind of maybe rightfully so at this point kind of realized, you know, maybe they're going to fall down to earth. And with as tight as the Metro is, all it's going to take is one or two teams getting hot and you're going to be out of there. You're going to be done Um, because everybody is all within. Like, I feel like two through seven are all like, I think the, the pens are at, seven with 44 and i think carolina has 48 at two that is like five teams compacted within uh four points if you go four four and two the rest of the year you're out you're i mean if one one of those five teams gets hot you're done and that like you said they got to make a move and they really should be doing it now not waiting till the deadline Agreed. Um, so I'm going to hit you with this, Justin. I'm going to name off of, uh, a couple of teams, and this is essentially which one of these teams, or you could pick a couple of these teams, are completely out. They, there's no chance that they're making the playoffs, okay? So uh, I'm going to give you these ones. Tampa Bay Lightning, Detroit Red Wings, St. Louis Blues, Calgary Flames, which or all of those teams are you strongly say they're done? I feel like of those four, it's the Flames. Detroit is right there. Like it's it's hard because they've been very flaky this year, uh, but I'm not willing to give up on them yet. Calgary's shown me nothing. <laughs> I mean, you know, you had the little bit of spark from Huberdu last week, but like they've pretty they've been pretty lifeless all year. And I don't, I just don't see that turning around for them. Unfortunately, if you're a Flames fan, especially, but I think I can, out of those four, I can safely say Calgary is probably out. Especially, I'm sorry, especially with like a, like a team like Seattle coming on, coming on hot. Like they were way out of it. Edmonton's come on. It's, it's likely going to be Calgary. Yeah, I, I would I would say so. Also, uh, you know, hey, I did chirp Jonathan Huberdo last week, and then he scored a goal and then got an assist. So uh, you're welcome, Jonathan Huberdo, for getting two points uh, with your ten point five million dollar contract. You waste of space. Uh, maybe if Barkov was in Calgary, you would do something. Maybe. <laughs> uh, also, I'm chirping you, PLD, because I haven't chirped you in a couple couple weeks. Uh, you sent this graphic the other day, thirty six. Games played, nine goals, seven assists, uh, a minus whatever you sent. I don't know. He's trash also. Uh, can't even win a face-off. Or, or I'm sorry, seven goals, nine assists, minus seven, 69 shots for $8 million. And your face-off percentage is less than 40. You can't win a face-off. 
who else can I chirp right now? Um, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm done for right now. Hey, uh, Austin Matthews, keep scoring. You're welcome because I chirp you. Obviously, listen to this podcast, Mr. Matthews, Mr. Austin, Mustache Matthews. Um, <laughs> hey, keep scoring. Maybe you'll earn your contract, and then you'll get booted in the first round of the playoffs. Anyway, uh, that was our <laughs> who's hot, who's not segment. Actually, I want to hit you with one more, Dustin. All right. This one, this one's going to hit close to home a little bit. And I'm doing it on purpose, but pass or shoot, the Devils will make the playoffs. Uh, well, right now, right now, <laughs> I want to shoot so bad. I want to do the homer thing and shoot. And honestly, they're in if it right didn't now. Have- 44 points. They're not too far away. If we didn't have so many injuries, I would totally shoot. Um, But I I think the injury bug is just, it's finally come to collect because now Siegs is out on a broken foot. Timo might be back soon. Jack is probably going to miss another game or two. Uh, We just can't, can't stay healthy. And, you know, it's ham is out for long-term. Like they just finally, I think they officially put on uh, him on long-term IR um short of like a depth defenseman move like a big time defenseman move soon i just it's too tight like and we have too many injuries uh and you know what else i hate joe <laughs> tampa bay and florida back to back i don't think it's on a back to back but this week tampa bay and florida like Tampa plays a very physical style hockey that that this New Jersey team do, just does not match up well with, and Florida is Florida, who's already kind of beat us up earlier this year. So, oh, I'm going all this way. I'm going all this way to to tell you reasons why I should pass, but I'm still going to shoot because I love my boys. Yeah, exactly. Uh, well, it's okay. Uh, I'll go ahead. Clearly, my chirping works to the op, like where they, uh, um, uh, the 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 team or the player does well. So I'm going to chirp the New Jersey Devils and say, Timo, earn your contract, you bum. Uh, New Jersey Devils, uh, stop being uh, wussy and stop getting hurt. Uh, and also, I'll chirp the Capitals, which I don't know how they continue to keep winning because uh, you guys suck. Just I'm just chirping them so that way they do better. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, uh, that's all I got for right now. So <laughs> that's, that's this that's this segment. Let's go on to something that we don't have to chirp at all, and that's the PWHL, Justin. Who boy, the first week of of action. You said it. Minnesota is a powerhouse, and I initially said. I don't really necessarily know if they're a powerhouse because in that game, I didn't necessarily see them like uh, over overplaying or excuse me, like out playing, but man, I look at it and they get a shutout. Number one, well, actually number one, excuse me. The Minnesota fans showed up to XL energy center, setting a record 13,000 over 13,000 fans in attendance for the XL energy center, setting a new uh, record for women's professional hockey. So stick tabs to my home state of Minnesota. I told you, if you build it, they will come. Uh, imagine if there was even more promotion, it probably could have sold out the entire building, but I digress. Um, so you get a sellout in the XL Energy Center, stick tab number one. Stick tab number two, the goalie, uh, shoot, I forget her last name right now, but it's Maddie, Maddie, ugh, I'm forgetting her last name right now. I'm so sorry, but she got a shutout that night. And uh, you get your first PWHL hat trick by Grace Zumwinkle. We're just killing it. PWHL, killing it. Well, Minnesota's killing it, number one. Uh, number two, stick taps to the PWHL. Absolutely awesome first week of action. I want to ask you this, Joe, and I'll, I'll end this with a question mark so that you know that I'm done talking. <laughs> but um, I, I, I didn't I, – I can't – I think it was Minnesota that that scored the first – the term is being called a jailbreak. The the term is being called a jailbreak, where if you score a shorthanded goal, your uh your player can come out of the box. What do you think about this rule? Question mark. <laughs> I, 
Yeah, I think it's a great. It it, it kind of gives it gives something different for the PWHL, right? It, it gives another reason to to tune in. I mean, honestly, excuse me, the jailbreak rule. I think is a great rule. Like, if you actually you're working and you score a goal, you're not just icing the puck, you know, to to kill the time. You're working your butt off and you score. Heck yeah, you should get your player back. Like, you earned it. Clearly, you did better than the power play unit, who's a man up. You, yeah, you should get your player back. I think it's a great rule by the PWHL. I love it. Beautiful. <laughs> Period. <laughs> but I, I, I had another. You know, I, I've seen most of the. I mean, unfortunately, I, uh, they had a game in Boston that got postponed. I think Monday night because of weather. But I, I've been in the chat for most of the games. I think all yeah. of the game, for some portion of every game so far, and it is a blast. And it's nothing but. It's mostly positivity. I mean, there's a few people who are asking the same dumb questions, but like. I love the fact that this league is doing really well. I'd obviously I'd love to see some growth. Um, but if you're listening to this and you're in the chat, stop asking about expansion teams. I'm excited too, and I want to see expansion teams, but let's see these six continue to succeed first. And then we start talking about bringing in an expansion club. Yeah, exactly. Uh, they're, yeah. They, you know, everybody's all, all on and on about team names. Look, man, we've talked about this before. I get it, but <laughs> let them proceed. They kind of threw this thing together in, you know, apparently four months, but let's get everything in set in and bring the community in. Let's not worry about that. Let's just enjoy what they have. I mean, in the meantime, it is keeping me from buying merch. You're, 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 you're losing out on a chance to get money from me. That sucks, but. I'm getting to know all the clubs and I'm getting to know each club's kind of personality. So, and again, right now I'm still leaning towards Ottawa. I, I really like the way Ottawa plays question or period. <laughs> yeah, no, I get that. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll just do a 10, four there. Uh, I, I agree. Like I'm kind of dropping it of I'm, I'm, I'm fine with just the names right now. I'm fine with it. I would love to get some merch though. Cause I want to get a Minnesota sweater. So like, if you can get that, so I can get that in my hands sooner than later, then we're golden. Um, I'll drop the whole team names and, and logos thing for now, because like you said, let's grow this league. Let's continue to get more eyes on the product. Um, and yeah, definitely. We're not talking about expansion for at least a couple of years. Let's get a full season. Like this is the first season, which is a shortened season next year will be a full season let's get through that and then maybe we can talk about some other things um period on that next sentence shout out was by maddie rooney of pwhl minnesota i just had to look that up i apologize i forgot her name earlier i had it in my notes somewhere but but i lost it so uh maddie rooney gets the first shout out in pwhl minnesota history grace zumwinkle gets the first hat trick in pwhl history minnesota is on top of the standings two Oh, oh, and oh, with six points, they, like you said, Justin, may be the powerhouse in the league, period. You love to see it. And uh, I mean, to your point at the beginning of the year, to your point, of, like I questioned why Minnesota was one of the holdovers from, from PHF, but numbers don't lie, baby. And uh, people in Minnesota love their hockey and the the finest point I can put on it, we love to see it here. Period. We sure do. Uh, so let's get into the other thing that we love to talk about each week. It's the three stars of the week. Uh, and so initially our third star was going to be the world juniors. Uh, but I'm, I didn't tell Justin this, but I'm changing on the fly. And I think that you will uh, support this. Uh, over the last week, uh, a we're gonna we're gonna give it to a goalie because why not, right? We're a goalie. We're a goalie podcast. Everybody mm -hmm. knows that. Uh, so we could talk about guys like Connor Hellebuck or Joey Decord, uh, but a guy that made his got his first NHL win. It's not Mustache Murray, but it's Matthew Murray of the Dallas Stars. He gets a shutout in his very first game. So third star of the week. You earned it, buddy. Not mustache, Murray. Good. 
other yeah. the, the yeah. younger non mustache wearing Matthew Murray of Dallas Stars. Yeah. Well, I I had to hit pause for a second when I was uh, I was clicking through Instagram last night, and a friend of mine is a Dallas Stars fan, and it says Matt Murray posts shutout, and I was like, Mustache Murray is in Dallas. Oh yeah, I forgot. There's another Matt Murray. <laughs> um, good for him, man. Like I mean, what did again, that happen? Yeah, right. I'm uh, I'm good for him. Good for the club. Like again, they I think have... there's three. I think there's three actually. Oh really? <laughs> I mean, you look at a name like Matt Murray. It's 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 not like it's it's uncommon. Murray and Matthew are are, are pretty common, but it's pretty common. Look, you look at it, he's got a good club in front of him. Yes, but you still got to get on the ice and you still got to stop pucks. So, like, it, and a shutout says you stopped all the pucks that came your way. So even if it was only ten shots, you still stopped all ten. I mean, any way you want to break it down to be to be that young. And, well, and they played Minnesota, so there you go. Like you know, just stick tap to you, uh, non mustached Murray. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Uh, our second star of the week. We already talked about him, but we're just going to give him some more love. Is the Seattle Crack and the whole entire team getting that second spot? Uh, we again, we love to see it. We don't have to spend any more real time on it uh, unless you have something else to say, but uh, we love to see it. It is a homer pick, yeah, but it's our podcast, so we kind of do what we want, and it's warranted. They're they're killing it right now. So, second star of the week, Seattle Kraken. Love to hear it. And our first star of the week, uh, definitely number one is the PWHL in general. Uh, 1A, PWHL Minnesota, for being such a workhorse uh, powerhouse squad. 1B, uh, I guess I'm on now, Grace Zumwinkle for that first ever hat trick. And 1, uh, am I on 1C or 1D? doesn't matter. But C, yeah. the fans in Minnesota showing up, making that record of indoor women's hockey, 13,316. I'm so proud to be from Minnesota uh as i said build it and they will come minnesota loves our hockey and uh go to the entire pwhl league first star of the week and that's two two weeks running they've been in the and you know number numbers wise it's going to be hard for them to compete because at most they're going to only have two games at a time but when you watch the pwhl and again watch it on your youtube it, it's it's a blast um it's fun and it's it's a really good brand of hockey and it's it's yes it really is anything you could want out of a hockey game like it i mean unless you're one of those guys that like just absolutely needs fighting i don't need fighting i like a little scrap i like some physicality you get scrap you get physicality in the pwhl it's it's really a good brand of hockey so get out there and watch it And the same point of the chat, because I've, you know, I haven't been on the chat in every game that I've watched, but I've been in the chat enough. And there isn't anything egregious in there either. Like people aren't being gross um, from what I've seen anyway. Like it's been good conversation for the most part. I mean, some people have some dumb ideas of like, this is how I would do the league, that type of thing. But overall, it's been like very non internet-y if that makes sense yeah uh on the internet so I've, I've i've enjoyed seeing that in the youtube chat too yeah very non-internet-y like i get exactly what you mean like i mean again you get the the Ooh, are they allowed to hit just watch the game they're hitting like what are you on about <laughs> like just watch it uh oh why are, are they allowed to fight yeah well technically the men aren't either like you get a penalty if you fight you're not allowed to fight <laughs> what are you talking about but they will, I'm sure. They will. Yeah, it'll happen. <laughs> it will. I will eventually. bet you when it gets to playoff time, there will be at least one scrap this year. Wait till yeah. playoffs. I bet there will be at least one scrap. Yeah, because they want to win. They're competitive players. They want to win. And if that means I got to throw a punch, so be it. Well, also in the in the expansion league, the first ever, like they all play like they have a chip on their shoulder. So like they're 
essentially in a way out for blood. Like they might be friends and they've said this on the commentary too. Like a lot of them are friends off the ice, you know, but when, when they're on the ice, like it's game time and they show that. So again, first of the week pwhl in general make sure you catch a game you can watch them for free on youtube they usually play tuesday thursday saturday from the schedule that i've seen there might be some other days there too but stay tuned uh to pwhl on, on instagram we're shouting them out even though they're not sponsoring us but we want to see the league grow period <laughs> end of sentence <laughs> We are on a little bit of a delay, which is is a bummer. Uh, yeah, and I, I mean, yeah, I we guess... are. So I'm gonna say this: we're gonna pull the goalie. We're gonna pull the goalie here. A couple. Of... <laughs> well, I shouldn't find it so okay, funny. You say what you were gonna say. End of sentence. <laughs> I was literally just going to say, maybe we pull the goalie. I should not find this so funny. Period. End of sentence. <laughs> okay, perfect. <laughs> so uh, I'm just going to list these off, and then you can respond to them uh, when I when I end the sentence. <laughs> um, it's been announced that the 2026 uh, World Junior Championship that we talked about at the top of the show will be host to St. Paul, Minneapolis, Minnesota. So again, you bring hockey to Minnesota, they're going to show up for it. So that'll be in 2026. Um, there was uh, this, the only, again, we don't follow the, like, uh, the junior leagues or anything, but I wanted to bring this up because I thought it was crazy that there was a trade made in the WHL, uh, Moose Jaw, I'm, again, we don't really know these players or anything, but Moose Jaw acquired a forward named Matthew Savoy, and they sent over one, two, three, four, five, six, seven picks to Wenatchee. So apparently Matthew Savoy is uh, a really great player. I, I can't wait to see him in the NHL, but literally Wenatchee uh, acquired like a whole entire squad for this one player. So that's interesting as well. Uh, and then the last thing that I want to throw out there is – Willie Nylander signed his contract for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Oh boy, he sure got his bag of money. $11.25 million. And I just have to say, way to go, William Nylander, for getting your bag. Congratulations to the Toronto Maple Leafs locking up another forward for over $10 million. He does at least show up during the season and in the postseason. But I will say this right here, you will never win a Stanley Cup with these four guys. Nylander, Tavares, Matthews, and Marner. It's never going to happen. You will never win a Stanley Cup. Good luck filling up a team that can actually win when your forwards make up more than half of your salary cap. Period. You can respond now. Period. They need defense bad <laughs> i mean they have defenders like that should be good they need goaltending bad although marty jones has kind of shown up a little bit for them but i i picked up marty in uh in fantasy and like he's he was on like a four game tear where he's like only given up one one goal per and i was thinking about keeping him and i looked at who he played and it's like oh he's played nobody um so no wonder uh and then I looked at the stretch coming up and I'm like, oh, well, you know, he we'll see what really happens with him. I'm not willing to, to take the risk, but um, they have no defense in front of them. We'll see what's up with Martin Jones. And if Wall ever comes back, what is the deal with Toronto for real? But to, to you know, good Lord, at least what? Almost 50 mil locked up in four forwards. Who else can you get? <laughs> Who else is out there? Yep. Like, it's going to be bargain basement D demon, and you're going to have to like try to outscore everybody six, seven goals, and hope that <laughs> hope that uh, Martin Jones can just hold on for dear life. Period. <laughs> yeah, it's insane to me. Uh, uh when all those guys are like, oh, I want to play here. I want to stay here in Toronto. I don't want to be anywhere else. I can't wait. I want to win with this club. If you want to win, take a discount so you can actually get a team around you. But, hey, who am I? I'm just a podcaster who's never played in the NHL. What do I know except 
I'm just going to say again, one more time before we end this show, the Toronto Maple Leafs will never win a Stanley Cup with any of these guys on the squad making that much money. It's just not going to happen. Prove me wrong, please. We know we love to be wrong. Anyway, Mm -hmm. that's the uh, show this week. Hope you enjoyed it. You know what to do with all the things to hear more of us. We'll be back next week for more stuff. So uh, until then, keep your head up, kid. Play to the whistle. Stick taps and sell these boys. Clap it up. Yeah. Woo. Woo. End recording.